Well, not looking good at all. The Nifty has gone ahead and broken the 10,800-odd mark, and it's happened very, very rapidly. A whole host of stocks are selling off. You have HBCL and BPCL, both those two OMCs. They have come in for big selling in the last few minutes, but I think it's the larger names that are selling off. And now the Nifty Bank is down 225 points in the last, uh, you know, just in the last, last two minutes. Last actually. two minutes, actually, we are seeing big, big selling. And I think the likes of SBI have come in for some big selling. That was holding the green. That's done a U-turn. HDFC, that's the one that's uh, dragging lower. And even Infosys, that was holding well in the green, that's come off the high point of the day. And that explains why, in fact, you know, the markets are moving lower. So all the heavyweight stocks, whether you're talking about Reliance Industries, you're talking about l &T, as well as HDFC Twins. And it's not stopping here. We're down 125 points as we speak. Even the mid-cap index that was doing a relative outperformance, that's done a U-turn. And that's as well down, close to around Eight tenths of a percent. So a lot of selling is what we're seeing on the screen. And now we're down 125 points. 10,785 is the level that we are at. Remember, Ashwini just joined us. He told us that, in fact, 10,750 to run 10,800. If that level can hold out, then he would be okay. But uh, in the last few I mean, yeah. completely in, uh, inexplicable. I, I'm trying to scur all the headlines. Uh, Europe has not opened. That little we've got in terms of FTSE rates hmm. is minus six points. I mean, of course, Asia has done very badly, but we really need to check out if Reuters is reporting anything, if uh, uh, Dow Jones is reported. I mean, this is, uh, uh, you know, a sudden fall off the cliff that we are seeing and we're being joined by Anuj in a second and in a minute, uh, I guess Nimesh, who is working the phones, will also join us. Uh, Anuj, uh, this came out of the blue. And, and look at the currency. Now it's got to 84. I think, uh, frankly, uh, the... Perhaps the amount of fall is surprising, not the nature of, no, not the I exact amount. I thought the time, amount. the speed. Yeah, you know? but you know, like the, the point I was making in the morning as well, uh, this is a market which is now perhaps uh, trapping people on both sides and it's all boils down to risk-reward. Uh, uh, 10,900 to 11,000, <clears> it was failing. I think it's eighth time that you've gone there and you've failed there. And once, you know, you repeatedly go to a mark and you're not able to take that out, Finally, you know, the... People uh, want to take profit before the next one takes. Exactly, and that's what's happened. And I think uh, a lot of weak longs would have happen, uh, would have uh, got in the market in last hour yesterday mm. when we had that breakout. Also, the way SBI is falling, we we're making this point in the morning about SBI. A lot of the move ha happened in the last hour itself. And you saw some of that actually unwind. Uh, now, this could also reverse uh, in last hour for all you know, as you know, more and more shorts would enter the system. But... A market in low volume. has closed now. I think I can see the rate still changing. That index has remained down 700 points for a better part of the day. We ignored it uh, because it could be there, but now it is 3% yeah. down. Okay. So mine is updating a little and, late. And, and I think the, so the auto sales numbers are, are, no, is, auto is sales having a and, big. Uh, uh, steel. It, it, so, yes. you know, the global steel uh, metal prices falling, mm, and yes. that's two big pillars for the yeah. market, perhaps. Yes. Not helping at this point. Not helping. And, you know, uh, like yesterday's move was on low volume. Today, those volumes are high. Today, it's, uh, you know, you can't say that, you know, this fall is happening on low volumes. 5.4 lakh crores in the FNO market, about 16,000 crores already happened in the cash market. And the way marquee stocks have fallen, you know, m was already down quite a bit. Today, it's fallen about 4%. Uh, uh, we, we are now getting very close to an important support mark. I think Nigel was mentioning at 10,800 there about. It's very strong support on the Nifty. Let's see if that, you know, holds on or not. It did bounce back from 755 to 803 yes. for now. Yes. But we will have to see which one sustains. Yes. Will the move towards 750 sustain or the move towards 800 sustain? Yes. But the, it's almost a V-shape. The, the Boxing Day low, 26 December low, which was 10,553 there about. That's the sacrosanct support for the market now. That's when it had made the hard bottom. But, uh, you know, this is a, this is going to be a tough market. I think uh, the first couple of days are an indication that uh, global, you know, the, the global piece is really uh, puzzling. Uh, global piece know, is not helping as It's not now. helping at all. Uh, US, we all know, is in a bit of a bear market uh, over the last few days or so. And Asia, I think it was a bit of a bravado to completely ignore the Hang Seng fall, 700 mm -hmm. points in, in, the, in the global context. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, you know, uh, that that perhaps might be hurting, uh, but uh, I think I, I take your point that 
timing is very interesting because mm. you know all of a sudden for the market to have this 70 80 point intraday fall okay, is quite stunning. Okay, it looks like some maybe a fund out. You know, in days of yore we used to say London opening, London opening, yeah. meaning thereby that offices over there opened mm. and most of our FIIs came from there. Yeah. Mm. So we used to make much of it. But uh, now you know it's electronic trading; they can do it any time. They don't have to wait for their markets to open. Ashwini Gujral has joined us again. Uh, Ashwini, we pierced 10,800. Uh, are you changing your strategy? Well, a couple of months back, 10,800 was a dream. <laughs> See, you know, markets fall this way when long positions are cut. So who cut long positions post yesterday? It's the weak longs. I think the strong longs of people who are still not in should use this sort of decline to buy into the market because you don't sell, you know, minor uh, wiggles. I think you need to uh, look at the major support, 10,750. Till that holds on, you have to believe we are in an uptrend and finally we'll resolve on the upside. The same global markets tomorrow morning, if they are up, you will not have a chance to exit if you are short. The market trend remains higher and all sorts of declines till a certain point need to be bought. And right now that risk reward on an intraday uh, sort of basis is now favorable 40 point uh, you know stop and maybe again 100 120 point upside now to guess whether this is the point from where the market will never uh, come back that's tough so just put your stop and take long positions and then hope for the best okay uh, well uh, you know we were just discussing that uh, the other point has been the resistance that uh, the index has faced at the 10900 950 mark uh, now it's becoming almost a pattern that we are not able to buy above that level. See, my take on that is that if uh, uh, an outperforming market is facing resistance repeatedly at a certain level, mm. whereas the other markets are collapsing, okay. then that market is strong. Finally, other markets will come back and we'll be able to cross that resistance. Because okay. if we were weak, we would be at 10,500, not at 10,900, 950. Okay. You have to take a view and then stick with it. Oh. I think if you see the macros have been the best in the last two, three months. And uh, that is the reason why we are here. Okay. So uh, you, know, you have to believe that buying will come back at some point. Okay. All right, uh, Ashwini, we'll keep uh, touching base with you. We have uh, another you know, before guest. Before that, uh, just look at dollar once again, dollar rupee. You know, Lala, uh, when I sent, sent you the, that uh, that mm. alert, uh, mm. after rupee. that, there's another two big yes. bars that have taken place on dollar rupee. It's now 0. 0.6, 6987 now mm. on the currency. So it was somewhere on 6960, I think, before okay. this market fall happened. 30 paise move yes. uh, in the, it in the dollar. It was 61 also. Yeah. When you messaged me, it was it went to 71. Yes. And now it went to 81 and 88 in a jiffy. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the dollar has been climbing. That usually is a risk aversion sign. But I, I'm still of the view that uh, because the, of the move last two days, from 70 uh, yeah. to 69.50 or 45 yesterday, where it closed at 69.46, that happened unusually. And perhaps that would also explain because year end equity factors also took place, you know, there's some NAB management or something. Perhaps, you know, the last couple of days of gains are also getting reversed. So, essentially, you know, essentially we are still in a range. We are in a range between 10,500 to 11,000. This market lacks triggers to take out 11,000 and this market lacks triggers to perhaps break 10,500 decisively. In that, you'll have to smartly play this range till the time the market gives you an indication that it's ready to break that range. Okay, we are also, I mean, I'm a little puzzled about the currency uh, only to the extent that there, there were reports that there was some FII buying of bonds mm. because the bond yields were at 7.42 in the morning and now they are at 7.37. And the explanation, or at least the buzz in the street, was that there is some FII buying of bonds. So, you know, uh, there are uh, um, uh, statements coming on both sides. Uh, we can't explain, but what Anuj says is important that we are still talking about narrow ranges mm. uh, and about uh, moves that happened when trading was in a vacuum almost mm. yesterday and day before. So, maybe these are not very material moves. Devin Choksi of KR Choksi is with us. Uh, Devin, we saw the sudden fall in the equity markets. Do you have any explanation? But I think uh, largely since morning, I think we have been uh, looking at this particular subject of uh, the auto numbers. And I think the one commentary which comes out very clearly is that uh, particular quarter, the December ended quarter, appears to be, I think, a washout quarter. Which means that I think the understanding comes out very clearly that consumer buying in other areas also probably have remained weak in this particular quarter. 
given that kind of a situation i think the market would probably i think start counting what could be the result season ready for in this particular uh, month and that's where i think the doubts have started coming back second mm. thing the metal counters i think the metal counters the china demand is not going to grow mm. which is likely to keep the metal prices under check and as a result of it i think those counters have also started giving up and they are showing the weakness so according to me the market is basically taking the fundamental cues at this point of time and i think the technicals have remain as weak as one could have imagined probably mm. we are near to the resistance level that is also adding to the point and that's the reason for which i think we are seeing this particular fall whether it has happened so sharply now or whether it will recover at a later point of time difficult to predict this volatility mm -hmm. all right so then when you're totally saying totally at a loss about the way the currency is behaving i just checked the dollar index it's actually gone to 9583 mm -hmm. i mean we, see the dollar index measures the dollar against major currencies but it's a, it's generally a weight about how the dollar is vis-a-vis -vis competing currencies mm -hmm. and the dollar index has fallen uh, considerably you know uh, i think i think so our fall is a little inexplicable uh, you know like for Unless example let's pull out bank of baroda for example that there's no percent fall and a half percent fall in bank of baroda it was up 2 and a half percent yesterday and most of those gains up uh, 2 and a half percent had come purely in the last hour of trade and if you're chasing that move uh, you know after a big move already and uh, you know when the news is official and uh, this is this is what's happening that this is more technical positions getting covered uh, same as the case with indian bank same as the no, case I, with i would have thought SBI. that it is just shaving off the last one hour moves yes. it is just that this currency fall is intriguing again in the currency there were unusual moves in the last mm. half hour so maybe the same explanation holds but uh, you know until proved otherwise this is a little puzzling why the currency and uh, equity markets should fall so suddenly in the past half hour i think the dow jones futures is down 230 points now so that's virtually the low point of the day that's point number one point number two is that last week at this day itself uh, we had gone to 10535 as anuj was talking about it's 10535 that's the exact mark so from there if you just looking at it relatively we're still up 250 yeah. points uh, order from those levels and point number three nigel i t uh, you know we can't you know explain each and every move, move. Yeah. what we what we can do and what we should do is basically respect the risk reward respect the boundaries this is the market which is respecting boundaries yeah. you knew that 10950 was a massive resistance and somewhere around that uh, things were not working perhaps uh, and the market lacked trigger this is not a roaring bull market which will take out you know levels perhaps uh, that's how why, why you know how it's playing out from the lower levels you'll be seeing rally as well that would also happen Absolutely. but uh, it it all boils down to respecting that risk reward and we can't explain every move on the market yeah of course we can't it's just that it was a precipitous fall so yeah. we thought we would ask experts whether they heard something which we hadn't uh, now it's come back above 10800 so it was perhaps just an excitement uh, and nothing more